Hey guys, it's Agustin Drummer again, and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you again for joining today. I really appreciate your time. And today I'm pretty excited because I'm gonna be bringing you a new video on Visual Effects Craft. This new video is going to introduce a new node, which is called a three-dimensional node. This node is gonna allow us to create something that represents what we have behind the scenes. I had a lot of fun creating it. I think it can create some really dramatic and amazing effects. So let's jump into Unity and I start looking at it. All right, guys, so let me show you how these effects works and how did I come up with the look and feel. So I've been using a new node that is called the Position Sequential Three-Dimensional. And I, I get some really interesting styles and look. And just let me walk you through the very beginning and then we can look at that node as a, basically as a component in more detail. So just as, like I do on every video, I always have a spawn which is the rate. This one is set to 100,000 and it's set to constant. Basically, it's a, it's a constant span rate. Then in the initialized particle system, I have just a ton of particles. I could lower these down if I wanted to and change the capacity. I think we're gonna still get some somewhere, you know, about the same look and feel. And then I can just recompile it and see if it, so we can probably just, you know, do lower particle rate and it's still gonna give us a really cool look. And that depends on the system you're trying to achieve, you know, the, the particles and, and basically how it performs. Then the velocity random component, I have this set to negative 0 0.333, 0 0.2, negative 0.333, and then on the positive side on the other side, except B it stores at one. I also have a set lifetime random that goes through, you know, from one to 10. You can change that if you like, you know, to get different effects. There's really not a right or wrong answer in this system. And let me go ahead and get rid of this system. This is one that I was that what I was basically troubleshooting. I had a sequential circle and then I changed it to use something like three-dimensional because it gave me it gave me a really cool cool look. So there's a couple of things in here that you can definitely do. You can look at using, you know, either you can index by a particle ID or you can use uh, basically a custom index. You can write the position, you can write the target position. I have currently set to write the position. I also have a wrap. They have multiple options if you want to do clamp or if you want to do a mirror. And I think I just left it as default. It gave me, you know, what I was looking for. And I'm just gonna set it back to what I had. The, the other thing that you can also do is you can use an offset index. This one, it says to apply the initial index used to compute the position. I didn't really change anything. I left everything as default. The only thing that I changed was the the count of how many particles I had on the X. And this says right here, element X count used to loop over the sequence. So for instance, if I set this to a lower number, you're gonna see you're gonna you're gonna see changes right off the bat. And we can also change the value of Z to a lower number. And so this allows you to basically set either you want it to be in X or you want the sequential to be on Y, or you want it to be in the Z axis. So you can see that as soon as I did that, the we're kind of getting a little bit of a line. You get a little bit of a little bit of a different system. So if I were to uncheck this as well, you're gonna see that I'm not now we're just gonna get basically a very fluid, you know, particle particle system. And then when you do the three-dimensional, we start adding more more variety. If you want to go maybe to do about a thousand here and it all comes down to you know playing around with the with the system and and getting the best you know get, getting the best look and feel i use this like art and i just try different numbers and then see what kind of different effects do i get i can also uncheck undo 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 i think i think the numbers that i had get me get me the look and feel that i was looking for let me go ahead and undo that undo it one more time undo and there we go I think I did the count on X, I did a thousand, eight on Y, and then Z was 100. And then I started playing with some of the axis changes in here. If I wanted to do more towards the, the Y axis, I could do that. Or if I wanted to be these more towards the X axis, then I could change it and I could also do that. Uh, one thing to, to notice, and, and you can probably notice that I'm, that I'm making changes and, and they're getting apply right away make sure that you have add-on because i had some people ask me dilma how do you get this to compile automatically normally this is set automatically to to be in auto so if you don't make sure that you set it otherwise you're gonna have to recompile every time you make a change so i have it set to auto and then i think that's basically that component the three-dimensional node 
And if I go in here on the update, I have forces on the, I used to have these to be, you know, a larger Z number. And, and you can do that. I mean, it just depends on what you're looking for. If you want to do negative, negative 10, that'll give you more, you know, more, more of a, more forces that are attracting towards the negative Z axis. You can see how that is changing. If we go to the same view, there it's going to be more particles flying that way because I'm applying forces that way. Think if I do what I had, which was one, we go in here. Now particles are staying in here. There's really not much forces apply other than one on Z and then also on X. Can also change this back to zero and they're going to be basically steady. They're just going to always stay at the origin. You can see that they're staying all at the origin. So I think one and one give me give me a cool you know randomization on, on the forces, and then I'm using the turbulence just like I did on the previous videos. I have the position. This is all default. I have intensity, and then the the, the thing that is changing quite a bit is basically the 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 scale that I'm applying. I'm going from a negative, actually from a, a 0 0.1 to an 11, and then I'm changing that every five seconds. You can change it to be more you know rapidly and you can kind of see how we get a little bit of a change and then it stops it simulates kind of like a slow motion if you if you want to do that or we can go back to what we have which was five probably just do two and then we can play with some of these numbers if you want to go to a negative number and then change you know change the scale you can definitely do that i'm going to go back to five and then intensity you know still the the lower that i had before you want to go lower than that you can go lower than that or or much higher you can get you're getting more granularity, more grain particles, which I, I didn't really like. So I went to a lower number. It gives me more control over the particles. And then the same thing with the drag. I just didn't want to have the physics go crazy. So I just dragged that number down, actually up, because the higher the number, the more drag you have over the physics that are applied to the to the particles. So I'm just going to go back to 3. We can probably just do 3.5. That way we have this set to, you know, the, not, not too many decimal places. And then the frequency I have it set to 1064. And then, you know, some of these settings I already played with in the previous videos, make sure you watch those. And then what I did here is I have the same, you know, same colors that I applied before. I have a gradient map with simple, the blame mode is addictive. And then my gradient that you can see in here. For some reason, this is looking different than what I had. Let me go ahead and go back, undo and then undo. And we we'll probably just do. There we go. I think that it's where I landed. And we can probably just do a reset on the branch. That way, I know that I didn't make too many changes because I, I really I really like what I had. So let me just go ahead and just do a reset status. And this is a cool thing about using source control is I can do git checkout, and then I know that. Any changes that I apply to the graph are going to be, you know, undo. And now I have the graph that I started with, which you can see that it looks different. So I did make some changes that affected it. So the same thing here on the quad output. And then I have the particle size. I have it set to very low. You want to deal with lower, you know, lower number. You can change that if you like. Or if you want to go larger, you can go, you know, larger particle size. I think what I had was, was perfect. So I'm just going to go back to 0 0.009. And then the same thing, I have a scale on the X particles and also on the Z particles. I'm blending the color and I also have, I'm applying an alpha at the end. I don't think I'm using these nodes, so I'm just gonna remove that. And then that's honestly everything that I have for you guys today. If you guys have any questions, please let me know. All right guys, thank you much for watching this video today. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions about anything that I just mentioned about visual effects graph in Unity, please let me know in the comments. Also, be sure to check out GameDev.net because they have great resources for game developers. And also find me in Petro.com where I'm basically posting information about what I'm doing behind the scenes and also early access to source code. Thank you very much, guys.